Good morning. Zhao Sheng Hao. Say hello. Uh, good morning. My name is Joe Kelly. I'm your MC for today. Sorry, I'm going to speak in English because my Chinese is terrible. Um, welcome to Huawei. Welcome to a very important announcement. Um, some, some rules first. We've got translation, English and Chinese. There's Wi-Fi in the room. Please mute your telephones, your mobile phones, for the next two hours. Can we bring up the agenda slide, please? So we're going to make some announcements. Um, we're honored today to be hosting some of the world's largest names and brands in global computing. You're going to hear from them a little bit later. Um, but today we're going to move on with showtime. Um, let me introduce the first speaker, uh, director of the board, member of the board, and strategy, chief strategy marketing officer for Huawei. Please welcome Mr. William Shu. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our product launch. Today, we see media friends from across the world, as well as analysts and partners. Also, we have some participants joining online. As you all know, the future world will be an intelligent world featured by all things sensing, all things connected, and all things intelligent. This means that the scale of information will be huge. There will be pervasive computing and diverse scenarios of computing applications, ranging from vacuum cleaning robots to smartphones, IoT, smart home, and so on. Also, smart driving. Scenario diversity leads to data diversity. Diverse applications lead to diverse data, such as text, images, videos, and so on, among which we also see structured and unstructured data. Different data require different computing capabilities. We can see that in CPU domain, computing can be divided into scientific computing and integer computing. Let's look at this industry. We have an all-round champion, x86. Apart from that, we also have champions for different fields. For instance, those that excel in image processing, GPU, those that excel in artificial intelligence, NPU those that excel in digital signal processing, namely DSP. Also, we have ARM, the risk-based architecture, from smartphones to wearables. These are the application scenarios. So we have champions in different fields. So there is not a single computing architecture that can meet all of the requirements. We see the coexistence of CPU, DSP, GPU, AI chips, and FPGA. Heterogeneous computing composed of multiple computing architecture is the way to the future. Looking ahead into the future, according to the forecast of Huawei Global Industry Vision 2025, the annual increased data volume in 2025 will reach 180 ZB. And that means from 2018 to 2025, there is an increase of 18 times. Let's look at AI computing power. From 2013 to 2018, the AI computing power has increased by 300,000 times. From now on, there will be a time times growth in computing demand every year. And this shows an imbalance between demand and 
supply. And therefore, we need to see how we can further foster the growth. Intel's development follows the pattern of Moore's law. X86 helps to popularize computing, creating the PC era. With the emergence of many data centers, it is natural for Intel to enter the server domain and become a giant. And it is also expanding to edge computing space. ARM started in 1993. And it was first applied in scenarios with lower computing demand, such as smartphones, wearables, and smart devices at home. By the end of 2017, the ARM-based chips shipped to date reached more than 120 billion units. So this is a massive amount. With ARM's continuous technical advances, especially the massive performance gains enabled by many cores, more importantly, ARM has an open ecosystem. With that, apart from devices and edge computing, ARM has also been applied to servers and data centers. Currently, ARM architecture has its advantages in many cores and low power consumption. In terms of big data, distributed storage, and ARM native applications, ARM has provided a new computing platform for enterprises featured by high performance and low power consumption, which is a natural development for computing. In the past 30 years and more, Huawei has helped to connect more than 3 billion people bring them from the digital, physical to the digital world. And today, a fully connected, intelligent world is approaching. Every person, home, and organization needs ubiquitous connectivity, pervasive intelligence, and personalized experience to build a digital platform. Therefore, through connectivity, plus intelligence, plus cloud, plus ecosystem, Huawei helps to create values for customers, which is a natural strategy for our company. As you know, the future is a connected, intelligent, and computing world. Through focus, perseverance, and breakthrough, Huawei is adamant in the strategic investment of intelligent computing and has continuously achieved innovative breakthroughs. In 2018, we released Kirin 980 chip for the device space and launched the world's first AI phone, pushing mobile phone intelligence to a new height. In the AI domain, we released Ascend 310 chip to provide full stack capabilities covering chips, chipset enablement, framework, and applications, as well as all scenario products and services with deployment environments, including public cloud, private cloud, edge computing, IoT devices, and consumer devices. Ascend 310 provides affordable and abundant computing power to bring inclusive to all sectors. Today, we will welcome a new milestone for the computing domain. Faced with an 18-fold data growth and an annual 10-fold computing power growth, there will be massive demand for heterogeneous computing. For a long time, Huawei has been cooperating with Intel with remarkable achievements, contributing to the development of ICT industry. Huawei and Intel will have long-term strategic cooperation, focusing on value creation and continuous innovation. Today, the ARM industry is welcoming new development opportunities, and we look forward to the joint efforts in creating a diversified computing world. Today, we now launch Quimpong 920.
Wimple 920 is industry's highest performance ARM-based CPU for servers and data centers. Kwon 920 has created new records of performance throughput integration and especially power efficiency, pushing computing to a new height. Kwon 920, based on the ARM architectural license, is designed independently by Huawei. It is the CPU with the industry's highest performance. As you may ask, why is our Quimpong 920 with the highest performance by so far? Well, as you can see on the screen, in spec and benchmark test, we have surpassed the industry's previous record, reaching over 930. That means a 25% increase compared with the previous record. How do we achieve that? First, with the ARM architectural license, we independently developed ARM core. There were a lot of optimizations, and in particular, to address scenarios like big data, distributed storage, and ARM native applications, so that our performance is now the world's highest. And we scored more than 930. In addition, Quimpo 920 is a 64 ARM CPU with frequency at 2.6 gigahertz. CPU usually has very high speed, but the reason is that a lot of times the CPU has a big belly but very small mouth, so high throughput is very important. Why is latency and throughput this important? According to a study of Akamai in 2017, if the website loading increases by 100 milliseconds, the conversion rate will drop by 7%. When the loading takes more than 3 seconds, 53% of the mobile phone users will leave the page. To better cope with the scenarios of low latency and high concurrency, we have adopted three solutions when we designed the chip. First, increase the number of DDR channels from 6 to 8, as you can see here, raising the frequency from 2667 to 2933 MHz. The total bandwidth reaches 1.5 TBPS, up by 46%. Second, upgrade from PCIe 3.0 to 4.0. That's a doubling speed. The bandwidth reaches 640 gig bps, 66% higher than the industry mainstream. Third, increase the network bandwidth from 25 gig to 100 gig, a four times of the previous bandwidth. These solutions guarantee the high computing performance so that we have big belly and also big mouth. That's to say high throughput. And for traditional server architecture, CPU, South Bridge, network adapter, and hard disk controller are standard components. So four chips are used. However, Huawei's Quimpong 920 is able to integrate four chips into one so that our chip, our Quimpo 920, is not just a CPU. Instead, it is an integration of four chips with the industry's highest integration. Because of that, we are able to release more slots for other functions. That is to say, higher integration, and it also brings customer TCO savings. You may know that. Data centers are becoming bigger and bigger from sev several service and racks to data center clusters with tens of thousands of servers. 
for a data center with 100,000 servers, if 10% are ARM-based servers, the land occupation and power consumption will significantly reduce. As every rack has a limited power supply capacity, if each rack hosts more computing power, then we, when we construct a large data center, the floor space and power consumption will decrease. So when we deploy a large scale data center, for every 10,000 ARM servers, every year we can save 10 million kilowatt hours of electricity which means we can reduce the carbon emission by 10,000 tons less. As users' demands are varying, data center applications are also diversifying. Quimpon 920 is trying to adapt to the different types of applications. These are the test results of Quimpon 920 used for distributed storage, big data, and cloud phone applications. Most, in most of the indicators, it is better than the industry best. We believe that with further involvement of the ARM ecosystem regarding the traditional data center applications, Quimpon 920 will also perform very well. Meanwhile, as the mobile phone industry evolves, in terms of the emerging cloud phone applications, Quimpon 920 will continue to explore and innovate to better meet customers' needs. We will work with industry partners to enter into a diversified computing world. Innovation never stops. Huawei has been exploring on ARM-based CPU processor for over 15 years. As early as in 2004, we started to work with ARM and develop ARM-based chipsets covering smart devices, storage, server, and other domains. In 2009, we launched a smartphone CPU Key 3, the predecessor of Kirin chipsets. Today, Kirin chipsets have taken mobile phones to an intelligent world. In 2015, we launched storage CPU. In 2016, we launched the server CPU, the predecessor of Quimpon chipset. Today, we have launched the industry's highest performance ARM-based CPU, Quimpon 920, taking data center to a many core heterogeneous and diversified computing era. Next, my colleague Chiu Nong. Red Fox 2 will brief you on Quimpon 920's performance on service and also the ecosystem involvement. With focus and perseverance, Huawei has made breakthroughs in the computing domain. We are innovating continuously to create value for our customers and build a fully connected, intelligent world. Thank you again for attending this conference. Thank you. Um, just a, a public notice, we have journalists in the room, we also have some media online. Um, we're going to come to a Q&A later. If you're online watching the conference and you want to submit a question, you can do so using the online system and we will try to answer your questions in the room. Um, so we've talked about the, the CPU, now it's time to talk about the next part of the announcement. Please welcome to the stage Mr. Red Fox. Thank you very much for attending this launch conference. Just now, William Xu released Quimpon 920, the industry's highest performance processor. I believe that with this highest performance processor, Huawei will offer more ARM-based products to you. We will work together with our partners to expand the computing space and embrace a diversified computing world. I will spend some time to review Huawei's computing business. 
Huawei started its computing business in 2002. Since then, we have strategic partnership with Intel through close cooperation and continuous joint innovation. We keep providing competitive products for our customers. You can see from 2012, uh, the 2285, the first uh, storage server, and then Kabelit server, and then evolved to the uh, Blade server. And then we released the Fusion Cube and Kunlun servers. We have been innovating together with Intel along the process, and we've achieved a great market progress from 2012. Huawei formally entered into the enterprise market uh, regarding server products. From 2012 to 2018, we have um, shipped 3.56 million units of servers. And in 2018, the shipment uh, increased by almost 12 times compared with 2012. In the future, Huawei will continue to work with Intel. And I believe that with close collaboration with Intel, we will get even better performance in the future. The future will be an intelligent world featured by all things connected and all things sensing and all things intelligent. The development of uh, mobile phones, edge computing, IoT, and 5G Data diversity will drive computing diversity. The ARM industry will see new development opportunities. Today, we're very honored to invite Executive Chairman and CEO of ARM China, Alan Wu, to share with us the progress and the future of ARM. Now, let's invite Alan to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very honored to have this opportunity to be here to share ARM's thoughts about opportunities and challenges in the computing space, particularly in the infrastructure side. As you know, ARM's mission is about building an open ecosystem to support innovation based on ARM's computing architecture and technologies. In the last 20 years, ARM's partners have, to shipped over, have shipped over 120 billion chips. And these diverse chips have been in not just in mobile phones, but in just about every single device you can think of. Today, every person on the world, in the world, on average, consumes three ARM-based chips every year. As we have been working on the computing technology, we have now pushed the computing into hands of every consumer. Through the last 20 years, we have seen billions and billions of devices actually are not just, not just on the client side, but actually going on the cloud side as well. But going forward, we'll see the computing architecture the architecture of going from a cloud to client, moving towards an even more diversified distributed computing architecture. That is, trillions of smart IoT devices that needs to be able to make decisions locally, collect data locally, and we will see computing go from cloud to edge to trillions of devices. That means the computing requirements would be increasingly diversified. This is diversity requires a computing platform and ecosystem that is capable of supporting trillions of devices, millions of companies, and more importantly, support global value chain and global collaboration and open innovation. In today's world, computing is increasingly defining and changing our world. In order to drive this computing forward, make it affordable, deployable, accessible to every consumer, we need global cooperation, 
global innovation, and more importantly, an open global ecosystem. ARM's role, ARM's work with Huawei proves that such a global open ecosystem accelerates innovation and brings better services and better devices to consumers all over the world. As Mr. Xu mentioned earlier, ARM's cooperation with Huawei has gone way back to 2004. More importantly, in 2009, Huawei and ARM pioneered the effort of bringing ARM technology into the infrastructure space. We have delivered industry-leading pioneering effort in ARM processors in wireless infrastructure. And today, ARM already become the number one architecture in the infrastructure space, from switches to base stations to gateways to routers to servers. In the last few years, we have made a huge amount of progress together as an open ecosystem, bring ARM's computing technology, its ecosystem, and its low power architecture into the infrastructure space. As you have heard, uh, in the last few months, we have several major announcements, including Amazon's announcement of AWS providing ARM-based server computing. Also, we also, in the last year, we also have seen Azure moving storage towards ARM-based storage server as well. In Japan, we have seen Fujitsu announce high-performance computing based on ARM architecture. In China, we have seen, not Huawei today, Huawei, we also have Huaxingtong and also Fire Team. We have partners are all using ARM ecosystem to create innovation to drive computing in the infrastructure space. In addition to the hardware, we have seen a multitude of major open source and as well, in, as, well as enterprise software companies moving towards supporting ARM server architecture. Today, I'm very glad to announce that we have been, ARM has open networking and the server ecosystem is ready to operate. ARM and Huawei's collaboration, as we mentioned earlier, gone back many, many years. This collaboration exemplifies the global ecosystem and collaboration to drive innovation. Going forward, we expect and we believe that ARM ecosystem would continue to contribute to innovation in the infrastructure side. ARM is committed to increase investment in technology development in the infrastructure space as well. Again, I hear I want to thank you for the chance to be here, and I will turn over to Mr. Cho. Thank you. Thank Alan for your sharing. We're more confident of our arm. I thank ARM for your long-term support to Huawei. I believe in the future, we will continue to work closely with ARM to provide more innovative and competitive products and solutions to our customers. Now it's another exciting moment. And followed by the announcement of Quimpon 920, I'm honored to release the new ARM server products on behalf of Huawei. Please look at the screen. We name our ARM-based server as Taishan because it adopts the industry's highest performance ARM-based chipset, uh, Quimpong 920. And Taishan, namely Mountain Tai, is the first of the five famous mountains in China. And Taishan server will offer 
better performance and more reliable and stable experience to our customers. I believe Taishan server will be the best ARM-based server in the world. Today, we will announce three types of ARM servers. First, as you can see here, our Taishan balanced server. This server achieves balance in networking, storage, and computing capabilities. So it can be applied to different applications. It is the best choice for customers new to ARM servers. Probably after some time of usage, you have more requirements for higher storage, stronger computing power, then you can choose the following products. Next is Taishan storage server. It is applied to massive storage scenario. As you can see here, at a 4U space, we're able to support 1P storage. So for one cabinet, it is 40U, so that it can support 10P storage. What does it mean? I think you all like watching films. A high-definition movie takes about 5 gigabytes. And now we have one cabinet. And for this Taishan storage server, it can store up to 2 million HD films. Probably to store all of the Hollywood films, it will take at most a few Taishan storage servers. And next is our Taishan high-density server. It applies to massive integer computing scenario. In a 2U space, we can support four nodes, each supporting two processors. And in this way, one cabinet can support more than 10,000 cores. It is of higher power draw. Therefore, we have uh, provided the full liquid cooling technology to ensure that the data center can be deployed smoothly. The Taishan high density server can be the equivalent of computing power of 5,000 laptops with just one single cabinet. Many of you might ask, what can this server do to our customers? Now I would like to share with you some typical application scenarios. First, I would like to talk about the ARM native application scenario. What is ARM native application? As you know, in our smartphone, the processor is ARM. This means that this smartphone software is based on ARM as it went through the simulation test on ARM. Without the ARM servers, as you can see here in this diagram, the simulation test on software could only be done on a non-ARM platform through the translation of instruction sets. And that means two issues. First, the translation of instruction set will cause over 60% of performance loss. And second, we developed the software on the simulation platform, and then we had to run it on our mobile phone. It cannot ensure 100% pass rate because it involves two platforms. There are compatibility issues. That means the traditional method could not be that effective. In 2018, our smartphone shipment was more than 200 million units. In our app stores, there are more than 1.2 million software applications. Using Taishan server for the simulation of ARM native applications is able to increase the performance by three times so that we only need one-third of the previous machines to do the same work. What is better is that we don't have to think about incompatibility issues, so it can reduce secondary development. Therefore, the development cycle is reduced by at least 20%. And this innovation works on all ARM native applications, not just on smartphones. This is another case about ARM native application. 
a lot of the mobile gaming vendors use actual phones to conduct development tests and including simulation tests of games. So they need a large number of real phones. The cost will be high, maintenance will be complex, and the phones keep upgrading, so they need to keep buying newer phones. And that means it requires a big workforce to deploy a deployment and test environment. It is inefficient, and it is costly. We tested with our partner, and this mobile game producer used one Huawei's Taishan server so that it can replace 150 smartphones used before. This is a very remarkable case, right? So we can replace 150 smartphones with just one server. So naturally, it is our best choice for this scenario. On this page, I would like to share with you about the big data scenario. Now it has more and more applications. It talks about uh, reducing the nodes by 50%, power consumption by 33%, and rocks by 35%. It is our software developers that work with our hardware developers to utilize the advantages of ARM. ARM has many cores with very high performance. We did some optimization so that we were the first to use the EC method to store data. The traditional big data storage needs to write data copies by three times, and now we only need to write 1.2 data copies. And the number of nodes, again, as mentioned, is halved. Power consumption is down by 33%. So if you're able to find a scenario where ARM excels in, then it will bring you very remarkable achievements. This is another scenario, MySQL database. By optimizing the lock mechanism, we can improve the concurrency by many core architecture, dynamically configuring memory and computing cores so that we can fully leverage its many core capability in this way. As mentioned by William Xu, our Quimple 920 has the built-in networking processing capability, namely Rocky. Our network speed is increased, reducing latency. Through these measures, as seen on the slide, our QPS is up by 53%, TPS is up by 35%. Now I will briefly summarize. For ARM's native application, ARM server has the natural advantage. And second, if you are able to find scenarios where we can leverage the advantages of ARMs, namely many cores, high performance, high throughput, high bandwidth, if any of the features can be satisfied, then we'll be able to see the remarkable achievements of ARM. That is why we are willing to work with more partners to explore the possible applications of ARM so that ARM can be even more cost effective. Apart from announcing our Taishan servers, I'm also very honored to announce that with Taishan servers, Huawei Cloud will be able to offer Elastic Cloud, Bare Metal, and Cloud Phone services. As Ella mentioned, some of our competitors have also launched Elastic Cloud services, but we are very proud to say that with Huawei's Taishan server, Huawei's Elastic Cloud performance is three times of the equivalent AWS service. Huawei's bare metal service on the cloud can create new opportunities for users because purchasing an ARM server takes a lot of time, but with the bare metal service, you are able to conveniently enjoy the advantages of ARM so that you don't have to purchase it. 
Instead, you just、uh, run your software on Huawei Cloud. If you think that it is very effective, then you can purchase. And also, I'm very honored to announce that we are the pioneer in offering cloud phone service. What does it mean? It means is that you are able to have a much stronger phone than others on the cloud. It can run all the applications, so that it offers a high-performing, secure, reliable, and compatible operating environment. In the back, there are some demo sections, and there are also more on the other floors, where we have displayed cloud phones, and we welcome you to try it. Just now, Alan shared with us about the ARM ecosystem. To ARM, ecosystem is the most important. Compared with Alan's slides, mine is more about our partners. Huawei is driving the industry cooperation at three layers: hardware, platform, software, and applications. For a long time, Huawei has actively participated in GCC, Lenaro, OEHAI, and other industry organizations. Huawei is a core member of Lenaro, and at the same time, Huawei proactively works with platform hardware, platform software, and application partners to create an open, cooperative, and win-win ARM ecosystem. Actually, I also had a slide of this similar、um, diagram drawn three years ago. Because three years ago, there were very few logos of those partners, and now you see, after three years, it has become a very busy slide. And I believe that with the launch of Quanpon 920 and Huawei's Taishan server. As well as the continuous development of ARM, there will be more and more partners that will join this ecosystem, so that together we can expand the ARM industry to create better ARM servers. I am very confident in Huawei's ARM server, as we will develop it into the world's best. And today we are very honored to invite. Some alliance and partner representatives to attend this conference, and now I would like to invite some of the representatives to come to the stage to discuss about the development of ARM industry. Now let's welcome Mr. Ying Gang, Chair of GCCTC, Zhou Guo, EVP and Head of Greater China Lenaro, Professor Derek Platter, Co-founder of OEHI, Alan Li, COO of China SAP, Nadim Ashka. Global Field CTO and VP of Solution Engineering, HortonWorks. Han Naiping, President of China Standard Software. Welcome. Welcome. First of all, I would like to invite every guest to spend about one minute to share with us about. What kind of opportunities can ARM bring to the industry, and what kind of value can it create for our customers? Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. I think that, from the perspective of GCC, ARM's technical features and its development trend mean that it will bring more opportunities to our customers. And in terms of technologies, ARM has many cores, and It is of high density, so that the chip performance is much higher. The power draw is much lower. It is better for the application of big data, high performance computing. Based on the current test result, GCC believes that it is an evidence of ARM's strength because. In terms of the core computing architecture, ARM opens us up to the partners, so that partners can have more opportunities. Starting from 2018, Huawei, Huaxingtong, Emper, and other companies released ARM chips and servers, and it showed that the ARM innovative method is achieving new high continuously. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chu and Alan. So,、um, my simple、uh, opinion is ARM is、um, open platform、um, instead of wall garden,、uh, which may enable 
independent uh, de development and more innovations. So talking about uh, ARM Neowars, uh, just uh, um, released recently, uh, which is a very great foundation for infrastructure from cloud to, uh, from cloud to edge. ARM-based server provide a more option to the whole industry um, with competitive performance um, we are what and TCO. TCO is a uh, total cost of ownership, as, as I assume everyone knows that. And also, ARM-based platform would be very competitive to the emerging market uh, of edge computing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so coming from big data perspective, I see a huge opportunity which ARM bring to the table. Uh, uh, essentially, uh, if you look at that, uh, ARM chip already been a leader in IoT space, in edge computing side of uh, equipment. And now with uh, having ARM-based servers, it gives a unified architecture, which kind of open up a new opportunity. As Mr. Red Fox was showing that, that historically companies were doing the simulation uh, evaluation on kind of combining multiple cell phones and stuff like that to kind of get the similar kind of power. Now with switching that to a single server, they can get the similar kind of capability. It opened up a totally new uh, uh, opportunity in IoT space, in uh, manufacturing space, in smart homes, smart cities, uh, cyber security, um, telco, if you look at that, it is going to rev revolutionize all those areas of industries, according to me. So, so super excited to be part of this journey. I think it's going to help uh, uh, simplify reference architecture greatly uh, uh, across the board, and it's going to help us bring more opportunities for everybody. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, ICP is a cloud computing and application vendor with the uh, development of technologies and with more and more unstructured data. In the industry internet era, I believe such uh, architecture will bring more opportunities and also bigger value for the whole industry. Um, I mean, the, the biggest opportunity which we see in, in ARM is that it, say, brings back, say, competition in technologies. And the ARM model is extremely interesting because we have, say, one technology provided by ARM, but now being used by different competing solution providers. And why do we need this competition? Well, I mean, if you look at supercomputing today, and we look at the top 500 list, which is basically the list where two times a year we measure, say, the biggest systems, 90% of them run with Intel processors. And that will not be good for the future. I mean, it's not good in terms of, say, the, the prices which you pay for the processors, but it's also, and that I think is the more important thing, and that, that was, I think, very nicely stressed also already this morning, it will create more competition in terms of innovative solutions. And it will, say, bring more diverse solutions. And that now getting towards also the end of, of Moore's law is something which is extremely important. So not only to bring the compute power, but also to improve, for instance, on the performance of data transport. And we can see also now with these new products announced by Huawei that this is really going in, in the right direction. That sees already, say, gives the benefits of the ARM ecosystem. Uh, ARM as an open architecture, it shows greater vitality. Uh, now it has evolved from smart devices to the back end, uh, including big data uh, processing, etc. I believe that uh, servers and PC and cloud computing and cloud storage will get new vitality through the ARM architecture. I think the open ARM architecture will increase competitiveness and uh, productivity of the whole industry chain. I believe we will be more confident over the 
ARM architecture. Next, I want to ask uh, Hortonworks and uh, China Standard uh, Company. During your support to ARM and Taishan server collaborations, what kind of innovation offerings have you enhanced, have you offered to enhance the competitiveness? Um, I guess uh, one of the biggest things which we are planning to do, we are uh, bringing whole Hortonworks platform on Taishan servers, which is ARM based server. It means essentially all the component which run on Intel based hardware will be able to run on uh, uh, ARM based server. And what it means is essentially it is going to open up new opportunities for collaboration uh, in different industries, different sectors, where um, uh, Huawei already have a strong footprint, where Hortonworks has a, f uh, a huge foot footprint. We're going to collaborate. It's going to bring a greater value to the customers. And ultimately, um, um, uh, is gonna the customer is gonna be a winner. One of the good thing which gonna happen through this collaboration is that it's gonna open door for new innovation, new competitiveness uh, among different chip makers, uh, and uh, it's gonna drive uh, the future needs towards that. So, so keeping that in mind, we are starting our collaboration um, with Huawei on Titan servers around um, big data, AI, IoT. Uh, streaming, all those areas which are very, very critical. And I guess if you look at that, they are all future uh, looking areas. And I'm very su super excited to kind of even work very closely with Huawei team to see if we can even further co extend this collaboration on uh, ARM um, and el elastic cloud side of things. Because if we are going to make easier access to this hardware with the proper software, it's going to have a better adoption across the board. Uh, China Standard Software uh, offers operating uh, systems. We've had a lot of collaboration with Huawei in the past. We uh, had uh, X86 based uh, collaboration. Well, today with uh, Quimpo 920 and Taishan servers, uh, we are very confident uh, because in the server domain, it is a very competitive platform. Uh, China Standard uh, Software will conduct innovation with Huawei in several aspects. Uh, the first one is uh, China Standard Software OS is applicable to many different uh, industries, and we support, uh, we're compatible to different CPUs. So it is very easy for our OS to adapt to Huawei's service. Now, today we have friends coming from different uh, countries, and they took flights here. And we buy the ticket. Uh, maybe you have uh, used the system that is uh, supported by China standard software. We also uh, passed the B2 security level. Uh, which is a very high standard. Uh, so security is one of our priorities in Quimpo 920. And in the future, uh, regarding Huawei's Taishan service, we will work together with Huawei to offer more secure service to address the needs of the industries. Uh, today, looking at uh, the launch of uh, uh, Taishan service and uh, Quimpo 920, I feel very excited. Thank you for your sharing. Uh, through your sharing, I have more confidence over Huawei's Taishan service uh, development in the future. And last, I'd like to ask uh, the three alliance partners. I want you to share uh, what are your plans and recommendations regarding ARM ecosystem in the future. I'm representing GCC. GCC is a green uh, computing um, alliance, uh, which is uh, established under the uh, leadership of uh, MIT. The members of GCC come from the whole industry of ARM. 
at present, we mainly look at uh, the product ecosystem, application system, and also the product models. In terms of the innovation ecosystem, we know that uh, for the ARM ecosystem, the most important thing is migrate all the software systems to the ARM architecture and then optimize them. Huawei has uh, done a lot of things in this area. And GCC uh, advocates hardware and software openness and innovation. In 2018, we initiated and launched a China a global, a green computing community. And also, we organized some competition of green computing. Over 4,500 people participated in the competition. In 2019, we'll conduct a green computing innovation uh, contest. The uh, teachers and uh, students from the universities can participate in such a program and develop their capabilities so they can contribute more to the ARM ecosystem. And second, ARM ecosystem will bring more diversity to the industry. Standards are very important. We have released uh, several sets of uh, standards, and also we've uh, released an assessment platform so as to drive the industry to become more, more mature. And third is the application ecosystem of ARM. This year, with the launch of several ARM-based chipsets, we will speed up ARM's um, products and the solutions to be applied in cloud computing, um, uh, smart city, and uh, HPC. So far, there were several uh, real cases already, and they have uh, got very good results. In terms of innovation, standardization, and applications, and Huawei has contributed a lot as a key member of GCC. In the future, we'll work together to support the growth of ARM ecosystem. Thank you. Now it's Linux on ARM. Um, we are the um, biggest worldwide uh, open source software engineering collaboration organization on ARM architecture. So it's our uh, mission to improve whole ARM-based software ecosystem uh, back on our foundation day uh, eight years ago. Uh, just uh, Ms. Chu mentioned just now, uh, Huawei joined the Lenaro six years ago as core member, which is um, highest membership. Um, well, um, <laughs> so um, well, um, the whole yes. Um, <laughs> So uh, the whole ecosystem, uh, bes uh, sorry, bes besides besides maintain, uh, maintaining and improve the ecosystem for the mature market, uh, currently we are trying to lead uh, more collaboration in more new areas, including uh, cloud data center, uh, edge computing, uh, machine intelligence, autonomous driving, and etc. So just uh, Mr. Ch um, so for the whole. Um, ecosystem improvement is very long journey, um, which needs continuous investment from the vendor in the industry. We really need to be very patient and working very closely towards the right direction step by step. Uh, during this process, we encourage um, open and active um, participations. Huawei def uh, absolutely have a bunch of excellent engineers working on code upstream with Lenaro and with the whole ARM ecosystem partners in the whole community. Um, so Lenaro provide a vendor neutral platform for collaboration 
uh, will welcome more collaboration for the whole, in, uh, whole industry. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm one of the co-founders of the Open Edge and HPC initiative. Um, in the name you can already see it is anticipating, say, the convergence of HPC, cloud, and edge computing. And it was done in, say, collaboration with, say, a number of industrial partners, including Huawei, also supported by ARM, in the belief that we need to have an organization where providers of end-user solutions uh, can work together to demonstrate in end-to-end -end solutions, say, the benefits from ARM-based solutions. I mean, we are all convinced that uh, with ARM, we have, say, a lot of new innovative potential, mm -hmm. and we see, say, very extremely interesting uh, solutions now being becoming available. But there is still a lot of work which needs to be done, I mean, to really grow, also, say, a larger market, uh, to demonstrate where are, say, really the benefits then in end customer solutions. Um, getting more to my field uh, of, of supercomputing, I mean, to demonstrate that you can get, indeed, also for highly scalable applications, that you get an, a much higher performance uh, with the new upcoming ARM solutions. So it is about, say, showing the value of ARM-based solutions. It is about convincing also, say, um, more companies producing, say, software um, to join this effort. So in particular, when looking at two ISVs, they are still much more oriented towards, say, x86 platforms. Um, they have started to port their applications to ARM, but now in order for that turning into a product which is then also maintained, I mean, it is then also, again, a larger customer basis which needs to be uh, then convinced that it's beneficial to run these ISV solutions on ARM-based uh, uh, hardware. And then finally, I mean, with, say, the larger diversity, I mean, of course, that is, say, to a large extent, say, a benefit, but it also produced new challenges. Challenges to, say, demonstrate that the interoperabilities of the different end-to-end -end solutions. And that's, again, say, an area where the Open Edge and HPC initiatives is going to contribute to. Thank you very much for the guests for your sharing so that we are more confident about these alliances. And I believe that with your joint support, ARM server will be much better. Again, thank you very much, all the guests. I will now give the floor to our moderator. And please stay on the stage. Um, we're going to take, in acknowledging the industry effort, we're going to invite some additional people to the stage for the photo. Mr. William Shu, please, if you can join us. Alan Wu from ARM, if you can join us on the stage. Grace Chen from Microsoft. <coughs> Lei Pan and Kenneth Chu from Oracle. Helen Tang from Red Hat. Yang Wang from Suzy. And finally, Tao Lu from Ubuntu. Please join the stage. Please mind your step. <coughs> Thank you. And uh, we're now going to move to the to the Q and A. Um, I'm going to invite three speakers back to the stage: Mr. William Shu, <coughs> Red Fox Chu, and A Wei from Huawei. If you can please come to the stage for the Q and A. I'd also like to introduce Ken Wong, who's going to be the interpreter for this part of the event. Okay, so the process for the Q&A is very simple. Um, we have international media in the room. We have domestic Chinese media in the room. We've got media online. We're going to try and give everyone a fair chance. We're going to use both Chinese and English. To ask a question, very simple. Put your hand up. I will try and catch your attention. There are microphones in the room. And please limit to one question per person. Um, I don't think we've got time to go through all the questions we might have. So one question per, per person. Can I start, please, with the gentleman in the white shirt, Joseph Waring, in the third floor? 
from Mobile World Live. Uh, good morning. Uh, Joseph Waring from Mobile World Live, based in Hong Kong. Yeah, quick, quick question on the, the possibilities for that for the new chipset, the new CPU, in terms of Huawei's